I'm excited. Why's that? We have an apparel sponsor, Parry Athletic. Such good gear and it's incredible. I'm, I've been enjoying it. Bro, George came through, messaged us on the Instagram, said he's been following our program for ages. He's getting stronger and more mobile. And he's got this cool gear company called Parry and he wants to send us some stuff. And he told me that his mission was to create the best pair of training shorts ever. Yeah, he wanted something that he could lift and roll in and that could accommodate thick muscular thighs and hips. And that suits us. Speaks to us. Also, what I like is I love the colorful design. It's It actually looks really cool. I am the most colorful dude on the mats these days, hands down. Yeah, you get that kind of expression feel. A lot of other jiu-jitsu gear is kind of a bit boring. Yeah, it's like all like grays and blacks and shit. This stuff is the color and the vibrancy. It makes you stand out. And uh, I think the thing that I've loved about it is just it feels good. It feels good. It looks good. And you, ladies and gentlemen, can get a discount when you go to check out. If you go to parryathletics.com, when you go to check out, Put in the code BULLETPROOF20 and you get 20% off. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I am JT and I'm here with the irrepressible Joey. What's up, fam? Thanks for being here. The white belt rules for BJJ. Nice. This is the stuff that people need to know when they start jiu-jitsu and people don't, instructors mainly, gyms, they don't tell you. Now, some gyms, they've got rules on the wall. They put it up and they're like, them's the rules. Give them a read. They might let you know. But there's a whole bunch of stuff they don't tell you, which when you start jiu-jitsu, you need to know. And their rules are typically more about the academy. Yeah. How to manage yourself here in this space, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Not, there's not really, there's very, I would say like, I've never come across, of course it's out there, but a gym that is like, hey, white belt, here's a set of rules for you. The to personal. guide you on your journey. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... If the gym's not right for you, cancel your membership, go train another <laughs> one. <laughs> if we're too dickish, yeah. don't hang out with us. Yeah. No, it's very rare because it's kind of something you have to find out for yourself through trial and error. Like you, you know... The hero's journey. It is the hero's journey. Let's go. That's basically what we're talking about right here. And the hero's journey starts with cleanth, hygiene. Did you say cleanth? I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an old white woman word. Yeah. My, my mum would hit me with that. A, is that a word? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. It's, we're talking, it's almost Shakespearean. Yeah, right. This is some old English bullshit. Like but cleanth. I mean, cleanth. <laughs> um, cleanth basically, hy hygiene. Because there's some, people do some weird shit. Hygiene's the fucking huge one. Dude. There's some filth in jujitsu. Let's just go first cab off the rank, even though you may not think about it, nails. Fingernails, toenails. Why is this? Because don't don't get me wrong, we're all we're all humans. We get a bit of dirt under our nails time to time. But if you cut your partner's face and you have bacteria under your nails, you can give them a skin infection on their face. We, also You can give them a skin infection anywhere. Like yeah, true, cut them true. anywhere. Anyway. But yeah, they're, they're bleeding as well. I don't know. Because you may have experienced this where you're like, oh, what was that? You're like, oh shit. They just cut me with their big toenail. They got this fucking velociraptor toenail. Oh. You're like, bro. I've seen some horrible toenails on the Foot mats. disease, fungus. Yeah. yeah, nails are like dangerous weapons. Yes. My son, gripping. my son's when we wrestle, <laughs> he gets really excited at a point and he, he'll like, ah, like grab my face and I, I haven't trimmed his nails in the last couple of weeks and I've got all these little nicks. I don't know if I got them, but like, mother <laughs> like it always cuts me. But yeah, it's real. And I mean- Particularly on the feet injits, I find when you're like in someone's half guard or yeah. lockdowns and that sort of thing, and someone's got a long toenail, yeah. that thing will take off, like that'll take a divot out of your skin. It'll shave you. And, and yeah. here's the thing, if you get a gash, and we're not just talking like a cut, like a chip, like a chunk, that, that's a scar. Yeah. You know what I mean? And whatever, we're all guys, we love scars. Also, women can dig scars too, but less so on the face. I think it's one of those things that, man, it's something that's very easy to control. Some gyms will have like nail clippers and whatever there, but you should just have your own, right? Like it's yeah. So here's here's where I think there's a there's a thing with this that's that's tricky, and I actually wanted to post about it on the Instagram for a while. Sure. So for me, I I cut my nails probably every two weeks. Sure. And then I like file them. Oh. I have to file them because if I don't, like after I've cut them, I use the- Sharp bits? Yeah, it's left. The, the edge is very sharp. Yeah. And also you've got like little corners and stuff yeah. from where you've clipped. So I file them. Right. Now, 
for a dude here in Australia, it's like, oh, mate, what are you doing? Filing your nails, bro? <laughs> yeah, it's like, relax, bro. Look at the cauliflower ears. Okay, okay cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're tough. It's yeah, but, but it's but it's not it's not something that I was ever taught by my dad. No. Right? Like or, you, or your jiu-jitsu master. coach. Or my jiu-jitsu coach. No one ever said, you know, and it's, you don't see guys doing that. No. I sit out the front of my house where the, it's not, the sun shines and do it, and sometimes Mace looks at me and she's like, I'm like, do you think this creeps out the neighbors? She's like, yeah, probably a little bit. You know, like clipping my toenails and shit. But your old Greek neighbor is like, just cut your lawn. That's right, yeah. <laughs> this fucking guy. But um, but so the, you you actually need to, and we're giving you this power. Now you have, we're giving you license to go and buy nail clippers and buy a file and actually have a little grooming a process little for yourself every like 10 to 14 days where you take 10 minutes yeah. To clip your nails and file them. And if you don't have that, you'll find that you're always like, oh, my nails oh, are a bit a long bit today. Long. Yeah, oh. like you're always, you're a grub. Yeah, but also protect yourself. If you're training a bunch of ghee and your grip gets stripped and your nail gets caught, I don't know if you've ever had that where your nail folds back on Oops, itself. Yeah. It's painful. It's brutal. Yeah. And having a nail torn off is even worse. So whether it's for your own self-preservation or for the, you know, courtesy and helping your mates definitely do that. I'd actually like to know how many jits fellas out there go and get a manicure. Because I've got to say, I've looked at this and thought, you know what? I think there's a point that's going to come where I'm, yeah. where I factor into my my fortnightly <laughs> schedule. It's, it sounds bougie. Where I go and get a manicure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like well, me, I'm brutal. I just cut it back to the quick. Bro, like, you I, cut so I cut, shallow. I cut till it bleeds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can go. That's <laughs> really why you stopped training in the game. <laughs> Well, no, actually, that's not it. But it's just my, it's just me because I'm like, well, I don't want to have to do this sooner than I need to. I'm just going to cut as short as I can. Oh, you don't want to be late. Like, you don't want to get caught with long nails. Yeah, so I'm just like, I'll just... But the thing is also I have mutant healing powers, so I have to do it every week. Like, it's got to be every seven days. Holy shit. Yeah, my nails just grow, same as the hair. So I've got to cut, cut them back real short. Now, wash your belt... This bullshit about, oh, my secret powers are in my belt. I think it was one of the um, dirty, dirty dozen, one of the original guys um, from under Hickson was like, no, nah, my power is in my belt. Right. It's got all the blood and sweat and bacteria. Yeah. That's what makes it powerful. Dude, come on. Like, it's filthy. You wash your face, right? Yeah. Wash your belt. Like, it, it is made What about to... all the power in your balls? I bet you wash your balls. Yeah, man. It's just like the idea of not washing your belt is just bullshit. Just put it... It is an old school thing. I used to not do it when I first started. But it's... Coach it's is a, like, don't do it. It's a total fucking myth. Yeah. You just put it in the wash with your gi. Well, it depends. If you've got a white gi, you don't put a blue belt in there. No, like you no, don't no, put no, a no. I've belt. seen that. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, you've got to wash your whites and colors separate. No, but I'm saying, like, don't get too... Life's easy when you're a white belt. When You wouldn't even <laughs> know a black belt. The laundry game is f***ing complex. <laughs> I, don't, I don't... What I'm saying is, don't get hung up on not washing your belt. Wash that f***er. Also, if you've worn a gi, even if you, like, you didn't even roll that much or sweat that much, even if you've worn it once, wash it. Like, yeah. I only have one gi. Buy fucking two. You need two. You need two, at least. And if you train three times a week, you probably need four, like depending on how good, you know, how much sunlight you get and is, how easy it is to drive. Is there an allowance there whereby um, if you are, like say it's a lights, I don't know, say it's, say you're wearing full rashy underneath yep. and spats yep. and then you wear your thing sure. and if you're doing a light session, say no rolling, or, or still not. Still not. Coaches only. Coaches can do that if they're just Well, no, coaching. no. If, if you stand in a gi and you do nothing, you don't roll. Yeah. Okay, maybe. Yeah. But if you're, I'm going to say engaging. that's generally if you're in it, because we think a jiu-jitsu gym is a fucking sauna. Yeah. You know, it is the breeding ground for bacteria. We're all humping each other. <laughs> Pretty much just rubbing up against each other, creating abrasions where bacteria can get into your skin. Like that's, that's as bad as it gets. But yeah. also, never put your gi in the dryer. This is just like a little maintenance tip. I had an amazing gi, Atama. I wore it once. My mum tried to do me a solid and said, hey, I'll, 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 I'll do some laundry for you. I was like, oh, mum, thanks. Put my new, new, beautiful gi. It went from an A2 to like a kid's. Oh, I could never wear it again. Like the little thing from the from the Wheaties packet. Yeah. You put it in the oven just, and it shrinks down to a little... <laughs> oh, look, a little plastic little square. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> me up. So, pro tip, don't 
ever put your geese in the dryer. It just kills them. Well, yeah, so I agree. Drying generally should be avoided if you want to look after your stuff. But sometimes it's good to, like, when you travel. Sure. And if you go to a laundry. Sure. They always put your shit in a fucking dryer. That's true. So it is good to know what the bandwidth is. You know, like, I, I, I've had geese where I've been like, I'm not gonna. I know if I put this in, it's gonna become too small. But sometimes I've had a game and it's a little bit too big. But it's more and that I'm it like that's the one. I'll I'll, I'll use I'll <laughs> use a dryer every now and again. So when I travel, it's more that it ages it. Yeah. It's more that a gee could last you three, five years. Yeah. Or it could be dead in a year. Yeah. And you're spending that money. It's more that. Yeah. So, also hygiene rashies. I'm a big fan of rashies and also spats, like leggings. Under gee pants. I'm a fan from a hygiene point of view, but, but in summertime, I'm like spats underneath. Like, oh, it cooks you. You can get. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm just putting it out there. If you're like, sorry. when I'm in a hard roll and like I'm sure. under your like mount or top pressure, and I'm like, oh god, I think I'm gonna <laughs> f- spontaneously combust. <laughs> it gets hot. It gets the real synthetics hot. Synthetics get hot. Let's let's move on. Pred- oh, can I just? Sorry. Yep. Another thing. You can't come to training after a day of working and sweating on the tools. So God if you're no. a tradie or something, you're out there grinding. And, and so there's a couple parts this. One, so you need to come in clean. So if you've just been working in an office and we're no big deal, it's fine. But if you've been like Got sweating dirt, in your armpits. Grease on the neck. If you like your butt crack stinks. Yeah. Like if you've been like hanging out in the toilet, taking a shit. Yeah. And, like, and sweating and stuff. And then you come in on the mats and you want to like Sit work north south with me. Like. No, bro. Like you need to have a shower. You need to scrub. Yeah. Like all of it. Like it all needs to be scrubbed and soaped. Yeah. And that's 100%. like, like that's actually really important. Cause tell me how many times you've been under someone. You're yeah, like, like, whoa, what the f- did I just smell? What is going on? Right. No, it's bad. And actually I've witnessed. I actually, yeah, Jules screwing up. You know what's I, up. I kicked, I kicked someone out of the gym. Well, I didn't kick. I, I told someone to kick someone out of the gym. Literally. I, I, I told this before. Dude gets out of his ute in, in Muay Thai shorts. <laughs> And a Bing Tang singlet. <laughs> and I swear he must have worked the day in that. Now, he wasn't coming to jiu-jitsu. He was coming to do like an introduction class. He wanted to do MMA. Right. But there was a beginner jiu-jitsu class on at that time. He literally got out of his work boots, no socks. My no socks, yeah. right? And walks through a gravel car park barefoot into the gym and upstairs and like onto the mat. <laughs> and he's putting brown footprints on the mat. I went over to Hoshi and I said, bro, get that motherfucker out of here right now. You tell him he cannot do the class because also we're going to have to clean these mats again before anyone else can get on them. I was like, that is unacceptable. What makes you think that you can physically come into contact with people like that? And it's also the fact that people don't think- I just want to stand and bang, bro. But you're going to put your face on that mat. People don't think that. That's right. No one told him, right? Right, yeah. To yourself told now. Yeah, and he was told the off <laughs> prep now this is the thing the hidden cost of jiu-jitsu is it's not enough to just have your gi rolled up over your shoulder with your belt that's that's it's a nice idea it's a nice yeah. idea of like oh, i illusion. just roll, i got havaianas on i roll up your shorts and a t-shirt and my uh, my belt and my gi surfboard under one arm that's right yeah racket get on the mats it's kind of bullshit guys Those days are past us it has because essentially you're showing up to do a, not only are you doing a martial art, you're also doing a physical activity, which is a sport and sport requires you to be prepared. If you go to football, you take your, your shinies, yep. you know, same thing. If you do Muay Thai, you have a gear bag, you know, you, you come prepared. If you do yeah, a boxing you need some class, shit. You, I mean, if you're, if you're the type of cat who's rocking up, like I'll just take some boxing mitts out of the bag. That's also super gross. Yeah, you, know you deserve I mean? the staff. It's pretty, it's pretty terrible. But what we're talking about is preparation relevant to the fact that you need to be fueled. Yeah. You need to be hydrated. Yeah. And there's a few little bits and pieces you need, like tape. Tape, band-aids. Band-aids. Yeah. Nail clippers. Bottle of water that's got water in it. That's it. You might really want to dial it in and fucking bring some uh, electrolytes or, you know, hydrolyte. hydrolyte, but at least have some water. Having your own drink bottles, crazy that people don't mouth guard. All these things, you don't know you need it until something wrong happens, something bad happens. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, shit, I just lost a tooth. I should have a mouth guard in. Yes, of course. Yeah. Because you're more likely to get kicked in the face your first day of jiu-jitsu 
then I think in a kickboxing class. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to be like, all right, first you, day of kickboxing. you won't be ready to defend. <laughs> you know, you've just got your hands on the pants and someone up kicks you in the face and dutz, you lose dutz. the tooth. Exactly. You get dutzed hard. Yeah, it's, it, it, there's a, there is really that thing with jits where people just show up. It's like, oh, I just show up, sh- throw my shit on and train. It's like, you got to have, like, you got to have those basic things because shit's going to happen. Someone's going to cut you with their nail. Yep. Right, and you're going. Oh man, I'm I'm, I'm bleeding. bleeding, or I got, or not bleeding, but I got an open wound there. Yeah, you need to be able to go off the mats, wash your hands, dry it, put a thing put over a it. band-aid, tape the, over the band-aid. Yep, that's a big fucking tip from the top. Of course, you can't just put a band-aid onto sweaty skin and expect right. it to it's stay. Coming so off. You got to wash that shit with soap, dry it, put the band-aid on, and then reinforce it with tape multiple times. Yes, sir. Um, ideally, you would actually do that before training, but if it happens mid-training, that's what you do. Um, but you, you got to have some water and shit. Otherwise, you're just going to be that person that's always kind of underperforming. You're like a bit parched in between, you yeah. know? You're like, oh, I'm a bit dehydrated. It means you're not recovering well. It means you're not performing well. You're also not learning well. You don't focus in class. Yeah. Yeah. So have some thongs too. You need thongs in your bag so that you can walk to the toilets. And- exactly. It makes life a lot easier. That's really what we're talking about because life is hard enough as a white belt. <laughs> You know, you got all this new terminology to learn. Everyone hates you. Yeah, you're getting smashed on. You know, you think you're important. You, you know, no one really cares. They don't respect you. They don't feel that you're on the hero's journey. They feel that you're just another white belt. You don't deserve to be here. That's It's hard. Life as a white belt is hard. Let's not forget that. But let's make our own lives. I was a white belt too at one point. I just <laughs> want to remind everyone of that. I love you. <laughs> Joey loves you more than I do. Look, if you're going to quit, just quit yeah. or let's not waste anyone's time like, yeah just neck up no what essentially it's hard you're just really hard and if you are not resilient you will not last yeah if you're not resilient you will not last Resil- <laughs> <laughs> hashtag stay resilient <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that i feel it's not talked about enough is the kind of the toughness piece to suck and keep showing up. If if no one's told you this is going to be really bloody hard and you're going to suck for ages, that's because it doesn't really sell the thing. But that's essentially the truth behind it. If you're better prepared, it will suck less. Uh-huh. That's what I'm going to say. Guys, don't overthink it. Joey, please tell your story. I had a, a message this week. I'm sorry. Hey, big fan of the show. Love you guys. Had a question. I'm... Three months into my jiu-jitsu journey, the advice that I got when I started from the purple belts was to focus on passing, on guard, and on not getting swept. I'm working on those things in class. However, I can't remember any of the submissions we're learning, and, and, I, and I feel like I've got a massive hole in my game. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> That's some good advice. Came from a good place, right? Right. The, the purple belts have tried to simplify it for this person. However, you've been doing it for 12 weeks. You don't like, have a game. It's literally 12 weeks. It's like, <laughs> it's all going to be a mystery for many, many more months. So my advice was like, yeah, that's great advice, but also work on the submissions. Like allow yourself to just do what, whatever, they're, whatever you're drilling in class. But the main thing was like, don't overthink it. Mm. Just keep showing up for a bit. Just do 12 months and then maybe let's have this conversation. Yeah. I would, I would go even... I would go simpler. Survive. You're going to get smashed on. Like, I I remember early on in my journey in jiu-jitsu, I I wanted to win, but I had no path to understand winning. I I learned an armbar at some point, and I tried to find any way I could do it, but I didn't really really understand jiu-jitsu. And someone had a copy of Jiu-Jitsu University by the Hibero brothers, and they talked about what each belt meant. And first step in white belt was survival and defense because you don't have a guard. So you're going to end up inside control. You're going to end up under mount. People are going to be on your back. Like really you got to learn how to escape and defend because you're going to spend a lot of time doing that. And really, if you don't address the fact that you are going to be in these bad positions and you are going to get smashed on a lot, you're missing the point. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I agree with Joe. Yes, learn the learn the sweep, learn the submission, but also know in your mind that there's going to be a lot of just not winning, 
And if you can yeah, survive- shit's not going to go according to your plan. No. <laughs> because also, you shouldn't make a plan. You don't know what the fuck a plan is. You don't know what jujitsu is. It's chaos to you. So it's one of those things that essentially in a bad position, learning to be calm and not freak out and not just push off with your arm, that's important quality. Like staying calm when you're getting squashed and feeling uncomfortable, that is an essential quality to jiu-jitsu and that is going to help you make better decisions to stay calm under pressure. So I would say my number one tip for white belts when they're suffering is survive. That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to think of it like as an analogy. I was thinking of it like a buffet. And if imagine you've never been to a buffet and then someone takes you there and they're like, look at this delicious buffet. Wow. And you're like, wow, it looks so delicious. And then they say, but I only want you to eat this rice and this beef. And you're like, but there's all that other stuff. Seven different types of beef. There's seafood. There's chicken options. Look, there's potatoes. And they're like, "Uh uh-uh, start with this. It's almost like, how about I just let you go ham on the buffet? (laughs) Just fill yourself up. Feel like, you know, you're just going to eat. Yeah. And so over time, then you're like, oh, okay, I know what I like. Uh, that, no. that actually really agrees with me. I enjoy eating that. You st- right, and then you kind of simmer back and sure. as you're in, when you become more of an adult, you realize eh, it's not about eating everything at the buffet. It's about choosing the things you like the most. Yeah, sure thing. Because one's appetite is finite, except unless your name is JT. <laughs> True. But so kind of like in that, like it's like, yeah. hey, we're learning all these techniques. Yes, you don't, you're not going to use all of these techniques, but just, just go and learn all these techniques. Drill them all, f- like make mistakes, whatever. And then in some time, yep. you're going to start to refine. And, and, and just on that, I would say that because this is going to lead us to our next point, just get into a habit and a routine of practicing jiu-jitsu. Possibly the mistake, this is a mistake, and we're going to go into the next thing, is people find it, they love it, you froth out, you're like, oh, this is the best, I need to do this every day, all day, Hyundai. So that's the thing, don't worry about it. Actually, finding a cadence you can maintain will be absolutely essential to your success in jiu-jitsu because a lot of people go super hard, get an injury, and flame out. And they're like, oh, I got six months in. I loved it, but this back thing's killing me, and I, I can't f- with that. Yeah, it turns out training six days a week wasn't a good idea when I was brand new. No. Actually, I would say, yeah, try and, the rhythm is different for everybody, but I would say whether it's two days a week in an open mat or it's three or four days a week, whatever you can keep up for a year – that's your cadence. Yeah. But you've got to you've got to kind of play with it a little bit, see what your body can tolerate. Because depending on your age. Keeping the next point in mind too. Yes, 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 yes. So look, I was just going to say, eight, this is a little caveat on that. If you're 25, you have no kids and you have no res- real responsibilities, pulling out four or five times, like doing- yeah, Go for it. Yeah, Destroy sure. yourself, you, you'll be fine. Yeah, but if you're 35 and you've got kids and you've got responsibilities, you've got a job- and you don't sleep that well and your nutrition is not great, training jiu-jitsu all the f***ing time is going to be way worse for you. That kind of same goes for 45, 55. Like, it kind of gets harder. You do see those older folk actually just a point who are like, kids are now out of home or whatever. Sure, kids sure, are growing sure. up yeah, and they're yeah. like got more businesses stable. and They've they got good income. Yeah, yeah, They've got that TRT. Yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> you're like, damn, man, this 47-year-old guy is really killing in it. good shape. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> You know, whatever. It's still about finding the the dosage that works for you. And, you know, arguably as you get older, you're not going to be able to maintain high output training for the majority of the week. So be intelligent about it. So here is the next thing they do not tell you when you start jujitsu. You are going rally driving. You are throwing your body to the fire so that you can do this regularly. You need to look after your rig. You need to get to the gym. You got to lift some weights. And you got to do some fucking stretches. Yeah. Must do. Like if the the one advantage I've had over everyone I've ever trained with was that I already had 15 years in the tank of lifting and stretching. And it meant I had, I still got injuries, but I got less injuries than other people. Like it was an absolute, I I think someone said to me, you're a white belt in jujitsu, but you're a black belt in like fitness. And it was a huge advantage. It meant I could be competitive with people who are way more skilled than me. You need to do this for, in my opinion, two reasons. One, to better your jiu-jitsu, but two, to protect yourself against injury. Because injury is what cuts the journey short 
and just it just takes the fun out of jujitsu when you're in pain. I think I agree. I think the about like increasing your performance that's optional, right? If you if you like you don't have to do that, but the injury protection that's an obligation. You have to because you are going to get injured no matter what, and so for people who have already a habit around being strong, practicing their strength, stretching, looking after their body, essentially, these people get injured less. I would say that the severity of the injury is generally less, but also they recover faster. Yeah. They come back versus the person that just trains jiu-jitsu, doesn't do any of that stuff. And they, you get put in some pretty fucked up positions. And often, if you don't have any system around training outside of jiu-jitsu, the, like a catastrophic injury can really throw you into disarray because you got nothing else yeah right like one your body is not actually prepared for it but two like mentally you have nothing else that you can fall back on yeah and and you know i've heard different counterpoints of people being like oh yeah but the gym makes me sore and oh don't do crossfit i don't have don't do don't do competitive bodybuilding not even that it's it's bullshit because it's all contextual because we all know what it feels like to feel really sore the day after like comp rounds or anything like that, right? But we're okay with it because we got that rush or that associated reward in our mind of, ah, oh, I did really good at jiu-jitsu yesterday. Awesome. It's worth the soreness. Yeah. Whereas other people who don't necessarily have an interest in the gym or they're like, yo, I'm not a gym bro like you. I'm not into that. I'm not a Chad. I'm not a Chad. Uh. But it's like, essentially, there is no argument you can make for being weaker, tighter, and more prone to injury. Yeah. Where's the upside in that? You can't. You're basically bankrupting your health. Like, why would you do that? What you want to do is you want to give yourself options. So the choice that gives you the most options is the best choice. So there is a lot of ways you can do it. But what we generally recommend is that you lift twice a week. Just twice a week. That's it. And then we would have you doing your mobility and stretching three times a week. Maybe maybe a little bit more. Like... We like to associate it when you do jujitsu, but essentially just by doing, and we're talking about the minimum effective dose, MED, just do enough to get a really good benefit. We're not saying you got to be in the gym all the time. We want you to do jujitsu. We want you to feel better on and off the mats because here's the other thing that they're not going to tell you. You're going to feel awesome when you're warmed up, you're rolling, you're there with your mates, but when you wake up in the morning, you're going to feel fucked. Yeah. And- that's no good if you've got other shit you need to do. You've got to chase kids around. You've got to load a ute. You've got to do whatever you've got to do to live your you life. sell and buy stocks. Exactly. It's hunched over a keyboard. You've got to do mergers and acquisitions and shit. Man. And, uh, you don't want sore knees when you're making acquisitions. No, when you're carrying all those bags of money. <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> this crypto wallet's so heavy. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. We want to feel good at Jiu-Jitsu and we want to feel good in other aspects of our life. But in order to do that, we have to give a little bit of time to doing a bit of lifting, do a bit of, bit of stretching, and that doesn't make you a gym bro, even if you identify as whatever else. But it can, if you want to be one, ha, join us. Be one. <laughs> now, last thing on the list, we, and this is the thing that people don't tell you, and it's something which kind of runs counterintuitive to our social conditioning in the society. Ooh. You need to make mistakes. You do need to make mistakes. Part of the reason, what really holds people back in jiu-jitsu when they first start, they're on, the, they're on their white belt, they're trying to get their first stripe. Oh, I don't want to look bad in front of the coach. You know, like it's the classic thing. You're doing the technique right, perfect. And then the coach comes over. Hmm, what's going on here? And you just absolutely f*** it up. And the coach just goes, <sighs> walks away. <laughs> You're like, why no? Like, oh, come, please. Spastic. I did so many. I did good ones, please. Oh. My life's a failure. But here's the thing. In learning, making mistakes is absolutely key, provided you learn from them. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, you coined this term for me, but don't make the same, stop make, don't make the same mistakes. Yeah. So you're going to make mistakes. You have to allow that to happen and then use that as an opportunity to learn. Like, why do I keep making that mistake? And ask your coach and they should be able to tell you, oh, it's because of X. And then you go, aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, And then you remember that and then you try and incorporate that as a learning and so the process continues. Ask the question. Yeah. I think because when you're new to something, you feel like I'm not, oh man, 
I don't want to say something stupid. Everyone will laugh at me. I don't want to look like an idiot. I'm I just going to keep looking like an idiot so no one knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, that's a, that's because it's so deeply ingrained. Like, yeah. oh, I don't want to ask a stupid question. There's, You'll be ostracized. Yeah, because everyone will be like, ha, 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 that white belt. How inexperienced and stupid. <laughs> no one cares. I actually watched a video on this funny Instagram oh, yeah? the other day of a guy, like a, like a dad and his son who's like an adult son and they're at the hardware store and it's like, what every dad thinks is going to happen if he asks for help at the hardware store. And yeah. he's, and he's like looking for something. His son's like, just ask the person ask, over the there. And he's like, Oh, and he goes up and he's like, excuse me. Can you tell me where I'd find her? And the shopkeeper's <laughs> like, just wait there, sir. I'll get some help. <laughs> and the dad's like freaking out and he looks back and his son has disappeared and the shop and then he's like running through the store and everyone's pointing and laughing at him <laughs> it's like yeah but you're yeah. like yeah I fucking know that feeling yeah we all know what it's like to have this um, fear of public embarrassment right yeah and I guess the good thing is to know that as a white belt it is expected that you don't know what's up you don't and that's acceptable but what is possibly less acceptable and you as a your individual self when you think about what you're doing keep showing up and doing the same thing over and over again and not asking for any help really slows your progress no one wants to stay a white belt at anything in life we all love that feeling of knowing what to do if you don't know you got to ask you got to ask even if it's and i'm not saying you could ask someone a white belt with four stripes maybe but your instructor is there to help you. They want you to get better. Just say, coach, I don't know what's up with this. I suck at this. And usually they'll get you to show that, show them what it is and they'll give you feedback on that. And it might take a couple of times. You might not get it the first time, but keep asking. Then what's great about that is you'll stop making that mistake and you'll make a new one. But that is progress. New mistakes is progress. And that's what, and this is, I actually got this from like a, a child psychology book. It's like, it's important to let kids make mistakes. It's not- You're trying like, to learn how to suck out kids again. <laughs> Man, I'm going to dominate that yeah. bloody under fives uh, jujitsu comp. I'm going to dominate. Ju- juvenile division on notice. <laughs> I'm coming back. Mind games, baby. <laughs> 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 I'm not here now. I am. Yeah. Oh, I'll keep them guessing. Um, peekaboo, bitch. Um, no, I think it's one of those things. Is that often uh, what they say is parents make mistakes by helping their kids too much, like not letting them fuck up. Like the kid has to make a mistake and, and get frustrated to have the motivation to then solve the problem. Yeah. If you solve the problem, now I can't speak from experience. Joe, you have a young son. I don't know if you've encountered anything like this. Oh, yeah, always. Where you kind of, you're like, yeah, yeah, he'll work it out. Yeah, like he's, yeah, totally. You, you know, he's struggling with, I don't know, opening a, a jar or screwing something on. Yeah. And you make a call like, do I intervene? Because that's going to ultimately help him right now. Sometimes it does, right? Because sure. he, he might be about to burst into tears and then, you know, whatever, fucking <laughs> lose it for the next 20 minutes. Sure. Like, hey, hey, let me just... Give you a little hand. Yeah, you finish it, kind of thing. Yeah. Or you're like, no, let him struggle with that. Yeah, and I and I. Think but your compulsion, your your natural instinct is help. Yes. Which is yeah. But the thing that I took from this particular book was, fucking up at something gives you motivation to get better because being frustrated can give you energy to drive you forward. Yeah. And so it is actually important for you to make these mistakes to be motivated because nothing worse then just keep getting far-sided armbar by Joe Worthington because that's, that's well, what I'll he does. with it like once? I'll no. you with it a couple times? No, I, more than once. But what I'm saying it's is it's, I there, know it's it? your move, Yeah, right? So for you You're to like, get it on me. Never again. I, yeah, I, I'm aware of it. I can't let you have it because I know that that's your – if I give you – even if I open my elbow just a little bit, I'm like, I f***ed up. I'll show you a sick defense to it that I learned recently. Ooh. Sick one. Unstoppable. I can't, I haven't figured out a way to bypass oh, true. it. True. All yeah. right. We've got to workshop that. <laughs> so here's the thing. When you first get started, there's all these things that people don't tell you. And there's all this loaded up learning that you've brought from society, which will not help you in jujitsu. And what I want to encourage everyone to do is to, and this is a mistake I made, was I just stuck to what I knew. I knew an armbar and I knew it was a sweep from Coast Guard. So I pretty much did that for two years. 
I wasted so much time because I only did two things. Now, I did those things pretty well, but if I think about how much jiu-jitsu I could have learned, like it would have changed my the trajectory of my career, I think. Same. And I think that, you know, you may be not in this for as long as you think you might be. You might only do this for five years. You might not get to black belt, but you want to make sure that you got the most out of it and you had a great time. Being stuck on two moves, this is fucking chess, not checkers, you know, two moves for five years, is, that's not what you need. So making the mistakes. Nice Denzel reference. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I took that from Nipsey Hussle, but Nipsey Hussle got it from Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so let's just recap. Number one, hygiene. You don't want to be the stinky gee guy. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to be the one spreading the stuff. You have a responsibility to be clean. Please trimmed. do that. And that means people are more likely to be nice to you and show you jujitsu. Also, techniques. don't have chat breath. If you've no. been like drinking coffees and fucking not drinking water all day, and you bit of a mint. Yeah, have a mint. Maybe, maybe even gum. brush. Maybe even brush your teeth. Hey, drink some water. Look Shit. out. There you go. But prep. Be prepared. And this is the thing they don't tell you. And this is the thing that we always try and encourage all our people to do. Have your drink bottle. Have your tape. Have anything Band-Aids. you think you might band aids. You got kind Fair of need your own little thongs. first aid kit. Yeah. The thongs, all of that. Be you might even prepared. want to have another set of nail clippers and a file in that bag. That's what I yes. do. I got nail clippers everywhere. Car, home, training bag. Always. So I can always clip. Maintained. Yeah. Ready to go. And then don't overthink it. Don't try and just be like, yo, I'm working on squid guard right now. It's like, do you know how to do a basic sweep? You still can't tie your belt, bro. <laughs> <laughs> still on that north-south? Yeah. That's the tough thing. There are so many videos on how to tie your belt. It's so trendy. It's so popular. But people want to fucking know because you don't want to show up and tie your belt wrong. You're like, oh, I'm going to look like an idiot. Don't worry. It's okay. But definitely learn how to tie your belt. Don't overthink it. Focus on just getting there and, 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 and making it a good routine. Get to the gym and do some stretches. A couple times a week and then do some stretching at class, either before, after, or both. 100%. And then last but not least, make mistakes, but do not repeat them. You. Cool.